Microphone check. Hey, um, we're gonna get it popping. Uh a conversation with Mr. J Hill. Uh Murder Monroe is in the building. Um, this is episode 10. Uh Lante Base God, shout out to my guy. I always say the guy behind the camera because when this shit get big, you know what I'm saying? You know who made the magic. It wasn't really me. It was the guys that helped me. Hey, Murder Monroe is in the building. What's poppin'? What's up, J Hill? What's good? What's good? Uh me casa. I wouldn't say su casa, but I mean kind All of. All I know is Ola. Ola. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't even know that. I just know this from like a couple movies and shit. Right. Okay. Um, be on the same point. On the same shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is my first time ever doing this. This is this lit though. Yeah, I was kind of nervous because I'm like, I be seeing the videos and you be having a big, them big things in your videos and I be like, don't think like that. Don't I mean, why like wouldn't that. I think like that? Like the fuck, like. I mean, cause it be going down, but you know, it, it ain't gonna go down unless I say it's gonna go down. Right, but at any given time, I ask you the wrong question and it might go down, and I am like. But I know you're not gonna do that, so that's why it's gonna be a good interview. Are you on that bullshit? Hey, what's 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 your sign? I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, we was betting on your sign. Yeah, we was betting on your sign. We was betting on your sign. I said cancer because I thought she was just sensitive. No, I'm Sagittarius. So what's what? Tell me something about the Sagittarius. I don't really know too much about signs. Well, I talk nice, the most about but signs. I don't know. You know, we a little on and off. That's what I could say. What that mean? Based on me, like, like one minute we on, then we off. Sound like me a little bit, like. Like, I be in the mood sometimes, and then just out of nowhere, I just don't be in the mood. Yeah, it sound like me. Right. Like, on some, like, moody, crazy type shit, psychopath type shit. N- no, I'm not talking about that. No? I'm talking about I just don't be feeling it. Like, you know, little rainy days, you know? Like, yeah, today. Yeah, that ain't me, because I love the rain. Before, I was, I was getting out the bed, and I was just like, should I get out the bed? Because, you know, it's raining. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to come. And you know. And fuck with me. I appreciate yeah, that. Right. Well, thank you. Everybody give it up for Murder Monroe. Since the first time we're going, we're going, we got a live audience in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It's the first time for everything. You know what I'm saying? But um Yeah, it's nice in here though. Appreciate it. Hey, um, so let's let's get to the bullshit. Okay. I was um I was doing a little bit of research on you. Mm. And the one thing that stood out to me was your image in getting to know you is like totally different. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're the example of never read a book by its cover, right? right. It's like you see the videos, you see the tattoos, mm-hmm. you see the Instagram, and then you, you just listen to you. Right. And it's like, okay, is it the same person? Right. So um, my first question, I kind of want to get into you as a person, and it's like, mm-hmm. given your image, right, and given the type of music you make, um, how would you call it first? Before I judge you, when I call it something that you might not call it. What you mean, like the way I rap or the way? The type of music you make, what is it? What type of music do you make? Is it's just I can say like it's mostly to me I call it hood music. Mm. It's like hood god mm-hmm. music. Mm-hmm. That's what I call it. Right. Cause it's like I'm most of the stuff that I'm rapping about is like that's what I'm actually doing outside around right. the hood. Mm-hmm. So you can say that's what I call it. Okay, I was gonna I was gonna say like trap hood mm-hmm. music. I just didn't want to be judgmental. Right. I was gonna let you, no, you right. judge your own shit. But um, so but. You got a, a big, fa- a relatively big family. Mm-hmm. Um, your mom's is relatively young. You talk positive about her a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, you said that's like one of your biggest inspirations. Yeah, she is though. And then you have a, a daughter. Mm-hmm. Desire. Um, how old is your daughter? She be three this year. Okay. Now, when I say I was kind of confused because it's like, are right, you still in the streets? Clearly, and that's what you rapping about. What you living? Mm-hmm. But then you have a daughter. You talk so, so much, like you talk so highly. Your daughter. I'm trying to understand. Are you forced to be in the streets, or is it just because recreation? Like, let me know your story. I want to understand. It's not, like, forced. Because it's like, if I didn't want to be out there, I wouldn't be out there. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's like the streets are not for everybody. But it's like, that's where I was already used to, for real, for I grew up out there. So it's like, it just became a habit. But it's just it's a habit outside. So, it's like, of course I got a daughter. Of course I'm going to go home at night and be with my kid. But it's like majority of the day, if you're looking for me, that's the type of stuff that I'm doing. Right. You know? And then it's like my mother, she a good help because she helps out with that because it's like, you know, during the day I'm outside. So, you know, it's probably do be a lot of people wondering, like, well, damn, where the fuck is this bitch at while her kid is in the house? And that's when my mother come in here. Like, right. So it just be like, she be helping me out a lot. It be working out for real, for real. Now, that makes sense. And, and it's, it's dope that you have somebody that give you that extra mm-hmm. support, right? Right. But when I ask the question, it's more so of, do you ever worry about getting caught up in the streets and something happening and then you can't be there for your mm-hmm. daughter? I mean, everybody think like that because at the end of the day, it is the streets. But it's like, you got to be 
thoughtful, Ben's though, that I do have a daughter. It's like I'm I'm not the way I was in the streets before I had my kid. Like the old DAG before she was a mom, I stay outside until the next day. You won't see me in the house. But it's like now that I have a kid, it's like I'm cautious. So it's like I go outside for a little bit, show face. But it's like before them street lights go on, I'm going in the house. Because mm-hmm. you never know what could happen after that. You right. feel what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I'm outside, but I'm outside checking on everything. Hey, everybody good? And then I'm gone. I'll catch y'all later. And it's like everybody understand that because they like the age is a mother now. So it's like it don't be no confusion. That makes sense. So, like, coming up, right, you said, like, that's where mm-hmm. you came up at. And I'm, you, I hear you say gang, gang a lot. Right. Like, where did that come from? Is it because the, the family so click tight or? I mean, it came from the family for real, for real. But gang, gang came mostly from, like, my friends. Like, because that's who I was with every day. Like, mm. of course, we got families. But it's like, on holidays, I was with the gang. You know, we made it a Every day we made sure we wanted to be around each other. So that's just how it came to me. So it was like, in songs, I would be with the gang. So that's how they'll come out in my songs, like little situations like that. So, of course, we got to talk about um, your friend that passed. What's her name? Sanaya. Sanaya. Um, do you, who, who idea was it to, to make sure we around each other all the time doing holidays, doing everything else? Because, I mean, you got a big family, so I'm assuming that you're used to family functions. You're mm-hmm. used to being around family. So I would think it was you, but was it you? Sanaya. It was Sanaya? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming y'all was really close. How did that relationship build? Like, how did that relationship come apart? Um, well, first of all, Sanaya is a twin. Mm. So when I met her, it was, it was you know, it was a package deal. It was two of them. Uh, I met them. We was young. They was probably about 15. I was 16 going on 17, one of them ages. And we just clicked, like, we was together every day. We was into doing the same stuff. So it was like eventually we was just around each other every day. Then it was a time where I was going through a situation and I didn't have nowhere to stay. So her and her twin sister, they over arms. They let mm. me stay there. So then it was like our relationship came stronger because like not only is we just seeing each other outside, now we living together. So we get to see how actually each other is. But it was like. We had so little time, but it was like you would think I known her Forever. for yeah for a long ass time. So I'm kind of rude. I kind of jumped into it because I, I was doing a little bit of research, so I felt like mm-hmm. I knew the situation. But for the people that might be watching that not that no, that don't know who who she is, let right. the people know who who is Sanaya. To you. Um, Sanaya was my friend, more like a sister. Um, she was real energetic, positive, always happy, colorful. She was always money working. Like mm. she was the she was the go getter. Like, cause I'm not gonna lie, when me and Sanaya was hanging together, it wasn't always. Cause mind you, I'm the oldest out of all my friends. I'm the oldest friend, so it wasn't always me looking out as a big sister. It was always her looking out as a little sister for her big sister, cause she knew I didn't have it at the time. So mm. that's what made us like clink. Cause it was never a time where. You know, you're going somewhere with your friends. You might have that day where you like, I don't want to go because I don't have this amount of money or I don't have this to wear. She always was that friend, already got you something to wear. You mm. going. Or I'm going to make sure you eat if don't nobody else make you eat. Or I'm going to put some money in your pockets if I'm not going to be with you around to eat. So that's the type of person she was. Like, she always made sure I was straight. She always looked out. She was like the piece that kept everybody together. Like, even when... All our friends wasn't getting along. So we knew that Sanaya would be the person to make us get along. So that's the type of person she was to me. I ask you that because, like, a lot of people don't know. Um, well, they might not know from mm-hmm. the video you got your hat on, but you right. got her name tatted over yeah. your, uh, your I eyebrow. Yeah, I mean, my friends, they got the hat on. I mean, her, her sister is in here, so. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So you still, like, click tight with the family, right. too. So what happened? Like, she passed away. Of mm-hmm. course, like. How did she pass? Like, what happened? I mean, it was uh, unfortunate due to gun violence. Mm. You know, I don't really want to speak on the situation, but that's the type of situation it was. So, I mean, it was unfortunate, but, I mean, we were trying to move past it. It's only been, what, like a year, but it's still real fresh for real. So, that's why I be trying to keep myself busy so I won't be so focused on beating myself up over her situation. Damn. And when you say beat yourself up, like, it was, I'm assuming... It was some involvement. I don't like. No, not like that. It's just more guilty thoughts. Like, damn, what if we was outside, or what if she was at my house? That type of situation. Like, mm. maybe it would have never happened. Them type thoughts. 
So having that situation happen due to gun violence, and um, you said like you still check on the streets mm-hmm. sometimes. That didn't push you away from the streets, like. I mean, yeah, it did. Like, cause like I said before, when Sanaya was here, you know, we would stay outside days, like six o'clock in the morning, outside all night. Then it was like when that situation happened, it drew me away from the people I usually surround myself around or the things we was used to doing. Cause it's like you can't trust everybody, and I'm just saying that off of her situation, cause the situation she was in, it was with people she trusted Damn. so that's why you know i just i carry myself different i surround myself different because it's just like my mindset be all over the place like, what are some of the intentional moves that you did since that situation happened because um i mean like i don't i mean i be outside but i don't go outside no more mm-hmm. like especially where we really used to hang at it's like it's not a hangout spot for me no more um the certain people we used to hang around who might be involved in this situation, I don't associate myself with them no more because it's like, it's no point, it's a waste of time for me for real. So that's what I mean by. So I, I say that because like, I think I just watched the last video, Um, if you know, you know. Mm-hmm. It looked like you was outside. <laughs> like, yeah. It like yeah. it was a lot of niggas with you. Uh-huh. Too. I mean, we, we was outside for that video because like, I haven't shot a video like outside in a long ass time and then it was like that video I felt like I needed to be outside to get the energy I wanted to get in my video right. so that's how that happened and I think I'm just I'm really just trying to because this is our first time meeting and I'm mm-hmm. trying to like build an understanding of like right. who you are really as an artist and as a person mm-hmm. past being an artist right and like again I say the first thing I the first thing I looked at was your interview mm-hmm. so I'm thinking like damn this chick is like dope for real, for real. Right. And I'm not saying that I didn't think anything differently, mm-hmm. but then I, I go to, if you know, you know, and we're going to just say you had a lot of props in there, right? Mm-hmm. So like you had a lot of props in that video yeah. and I'm like, oh no, she crazy. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm saying, I, I mean, mean, it's not that I'm, I'm just breaking it down to be honest. Cause like, um, my last interview, somebody asked me how I felt about the comment that big flock made when he said the situation about the young males having, the situations in the video and how I could get them Props. arrested. You yeah, stuff Props. like that. Yeah, so yeah. they he was basically asking me, like, how do I feel about that situation? And I had told him, like, I agree with what he was saying, but it's like in my situation, I grew up around a lot of males. Mm-hmm. So it's like even if I say, yeah, I'm shooting this video, but this time I don't want no props in it. If they fill in the lyrics in my video, I could just be shooting my verse and I see the video later that one of these motherfuckers behind me then, you know, whip they shit out because that's just how they was feeling. So it's like, I could tell them not to do it, but they still going to do it if that's what they want to do. Right. So that's how to end up happening because majority of the time, I don't go in my videos with the intentions of I want a prop or I need a prop. But it's just the big prop. In yeah, you know, like, you know. like yeah. the if you know, you know. I was just shooting and motherfuckers was, huh. Huh, you know, like, that's how that be See, happening. I, I understand it. It's just, and this is where, like, I really, just where my, my question that comes in, because, mm-hmm. like, Sanaya was, like, somebody that was really close to you. She died right. of gun violence, rest in peace, that's so. Right. But then I see you in a video with the, the big dumbass mm-hmm. prop. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, I wonder, for me, I know, for me, it would probably be like, I'm, I want to push everybody away from this. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what made you keep going towards it, honestly. I mean, it's not like keep going towards it is more so the the males that I do surround myself I know if it is props around they not gonna make sure there's no harm doing done okay. like yeah it's props in the video but it's not to the point where we shooting the video and one of the motherfuckers gonna go off, of course. it's not that type of situation I mean they, they, they toys anyway yeah, so they would so never go off so. it's like <laughs> if I am gonna have the props around I'm gonna have the props around where I know people that had time with the motherfuckers for years where they know not to put the motherfuckers in the wrong person hand. Right. And I'm and I'm not even speaking on that part, right? I'm really speaking on the influence because like you see you, you got a lot of followers. You got mm-hmm. a big following outside of your followers. Right. And that can influence people Them coming up stuff. after you that mm-hmm. to wanna have props in their videos or wanna use real ones. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like that's the same reason of why we could someone could say the situation happened with your your best friend. Right. And, and I that's what I, I think I was confused at, mm-hmm. the influence, really. Right. I understand what you're saying. I mean, because, like, in my sister's situation, it was unfortunate because it's like she was she was around dumb motherfuckers because it's like Sanaya herself. 
she knew what to do with a prop. You feel mm. what I'm saying? So it was like when her situation happened, I was so confused of how it could happen because it's been been nice when we didn't taught ourselves like, okay, this is what we gonna talk about in our song, this is what we wanna do. So obviously we gotta know how to use these jumps. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like when that shit happened, everybody was looking at us like, how could y'all still be, you know, like you said, but it's like, I'm looking at it like, how the fuck did this shit even happen when we've been used to these type of things? Like, we know the shit that can happen. So that's the type of shit I be feeling for referral. But like you be saying, I don't be thinking a lot of people be understanding because the situation and my videos, but. You know what I mean? That's, that, that's the conversation in itself. Uh, right. Let's get to the music. Um, Beginning of, well, Let's say end of nineteen, you wanted to um, you was you had big plans of like a lot of shows, mm -hmm. uh, dropping more music videos, and then COVID happened. Right. How did that alter your your way of going about the music industry and just dealing with? Your I business? mean, because when I ain't gonna lie, when COVID happened, it slowed a lot of shit down. I felt like my artist career was like in a standstill because it was like, yes, yeah, studios was open, but. It was like, yeah, if you got to come to the studio, you got to come by yourself. Mm. And I'm the type of person where I'm in, if I'm in a studio, yeah, energy. it's certain songs where I feel like I could go in there and be by myself. But then there's times where I feel like I don't want to be in there by myself. So I need the gang with me. So it's like, if the gang can't come with me, then I can't go. Okay, yeah, you need right? that energy. Yeah, I, I so, it. and it'd be like the same way with shows and shit like that. So it was like, damn, what am I supposed to do? Like, but then I met Chase my manager mm. and he was already putting me on like little shows and we was already doing little stuff but i seen his ambition like even though the covid was still going on he was still doing shit like mm -hmm. getting shows and shit. i'm like how's this nigga doing this shit it's a pandemic going on <laughs> so then i reached out to him i'm like bro like i want you to be my manager like i feel like you can help me with a lot I feel like you can do a lot for me. I feel like you see a lot in me that I don't see in myself. And not even within a month, I was getting features, videos, like shows. I dropped a fucking tape mm -hmm. in a month. Like, mm -hmm. you you know artists, artists be working at the tapes for months and months. I dropped a tape in a month, all because my manager believed in me. Like, so. How, how important is that manager to artist relationship? I mean, it's real important because it's like, it be days where I do be on some stuck up ass shit. Kind of like the day, like it was raining. Yeah, like, like. That's today. understandable. Yeah. Though. It was raining. So, <laughs> it be days where my little ass be in there and I be like, I'm not doing this doing and this that shit. and I'm not doing this. And Chase, I know he be wanting to cuss my ass out, but he be like, yo, listen. I understand. And he always hit me with that. I understand. <laughs> but we doing this today. You feel what I'm saying? So then I just be like, all right, Chase is working hard. I got to appreciate that he even getting me all this shit because I ain't doing it for myself. So I might as well just, you know, be appreciative and just get my ass up because that's all I got to do for real. That's good that y'all got that relationship because shit, right. I tell my girlfriend I understand. She be like, nigga, fuck you. She's <laughs> 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 like, nah. But nah. <laughs> But no, it's good that you got somebody. Right. I, I say this it's good that you got somebody that can get through to you and have mm -hmm. and help you get up when you don't right. want to get up, right? Because I remember you were saying like you used to be the artist that would drop like this year, skip a year, drop right. the, the, right. the year after that. Like so, this is the this year has been the most I've said myself, seen myself be consistent. Yeah, consistent. Mm -hmm. Like video shoots out the video shoots, songs out the songs, interviews out the interviews, shows out the shows. Like I've never been that consistent in a whole year. It's been like, yeah, show this month and then the next couple months I'm just living a normal fucking life, not doing shit. Mm. Then it's like out of nowhere I like it's not like that no more. It's like every day he calling me with something new. That's good. Shout out to Chase, man. Shout, shout out to bro. Chase. Shout right. out to because he definitely hit me back with the Swift. Like, yo, I'm trying to right. So right. Shout out to, a lot exactly. of people be bullshit. That's man. my boy. Yeah. Right. So shout out to him. Yo, what is some? What's 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 like the biggest accolades you see this year that you have that you've never got to in all of the years of making music? Like, what's the 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 thing you're most proud of this year? My tape. Mm. Only reason I say my tape because if if you has looked at me as an artist, I only drop one tape. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I was gonna drop another another tape so soon because you know the passing of Sanaya, that really made me not want to do shit no more. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to rap. I didn't want to drop no tape. I didn't want to do shit but just be a mom and be with the family. But it was like, motherfuckers, they really was like, the music, the music. That's 
that's what makes me for real, for real. Right. Like, of course I'm a mother, of course I'm human, but it's like the music is what brings out the best part of me. So it was like when I actually dropped the tape, it wasn't just, oh, I'm doing it by myself and I'm paying somebody to drop it on Spinrilla. This nigga drops my shit on every platform. Mm. I've never had that before. Damn. Then it was like it's every day somebody, I'm going through my message requests and it's a couple of my fans listening to my music just tagging me in it. It's like it's not a forced support. It's like I never had that before, so it's like that be exciting me for real because it's like, damn. I knew I was going to rap, but I ain't know motherfuckers was going to notice me like this. Right. But you got another one. You got another one that you got to drop this year because yeah. remember you said two, right? Mm-hmm. Two 2020. I'll pay attention. Right. I mean, it wasn't hard. It was only one. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be <laughs> like an EP. It's an EP with Chicho. You know, I fuck with the Chicho beats. So. Okay. That's that's what I'm I'm trying to work on now. So you're from D.C. Um, And y'all got a lot of popping artists in D.C. Mm-hmm. Uh, you definitely want to come up. Had... Has it been hard trying to work with some of the biggest, bigger artists in D.C. for you? Or I mean... How do they take to you as an artist? I mean, how can I say this? Because it's like, um, I don't really go out, not saying looking to work with all the artists, but I don't, like, be the person where I'm, yeah, I want to get this feature with this person, I want to get this feature with this person. Like, they going to work, if they want to work with me, they going to come eventually. So mm. it's like, I'm not about to force the relationship because at the end of the day everybody got their own shit going on so it's like right now i'm just trying to focus on me as an artist because i'm still not perfect all the way but it's like if the features come along the way then of course i'm gonna do it what were some of the people that you uh, featured with so far um i didn't feature i don't know if you heard of the um group of girls pretty money gang i just recently did a feature with them um I don't know if you know Janky Band Mile. I'm always doing features with him. He from around my same way. Um, I did a feature with Bender Pullum. He a big artist out here. Um, I'm about to do a feature with Killer Keisha. I don't know if you know her. I think but I she, heard of her. Yeah, I she a good Killer rapper Keisha, also. Yeah. She from D.C. too. So it's like I got a, a couple artists. So they fucking with you for real. Yeah. Like you getting love. Mm-hmm. What, um, how do you feel the music scene in D.C.? Like how do you feel like the industry inside of music? I is? mean like... I feel like DC don't really have like a music industry. Like I feel like everybody is just like on their own. And I only say that because I feel like a lot of artists that's out here is just like stuck. Cause it's like if you see the artists from the DMV, they've been rapping for a long ass time. Mm. So it's like you would think they were already, you feel what I'm saying, be somewhere far right now. But it's like we just still stuck in the same place, the same DMV. You feel what I'm saying earlier, so it's just like, yeah, we got shit going on, but it's not as big as other places where the artists are travel out of town. They like, damn, where they at? Right. You feel what I'm saying? So that's how I feel. But we, we, we speak out of town, right? Because I'm from Baltimore, and mm-hmm. like even I feel like a lot of people when we talk about music, we talk about Atlanta, right? And one thing that outsiders say about Atlanta is that they stick together. Do they you, do. Do y'all? Do you think that y'all stick together as a no. culture? Why isn't that? Why? why I not? only feel like that because. My my point of view from looking at other artists before I came to artists that I was, a lot of artists was always on their own type of vibe. And when I say that, I say, like, their own type of vibe, they feel like if you not clicking with their vibe, y'all not clicking at all. So I feel like that's why a lot of artists, you feel what I'm saying, don't support each other because it's like, if you're not supporting me, then I'm not supporting you. And I feel like that's what fucks us up because it's like everybody has their unique style, their different vibe. Like, my interview I recently had with Medusa, we two different artists, but we still click because of the energy and because at the end of the day, I don't knock nobody else's hustle and the way they rap. But it's like a lot of people don't think like that. They feel like if they listen to your shit and it's not cranking like this, oh, I'm not supporting that shit, I'm not pushing that shit. See, it sounds like you like, you know what I'm saying? Like, speaking to you is definitely dope, right? And mm-hmm. and. And it seemed like you definitely for the people. Then I look online and I see this shit with you and Shelly, the MC, and I'm like, right. what the fuck happened? So How she, did that happen? Our situation was different because I'm not going to lie. When when Shelly first came out, you know, I was listening to her saying what she had to say because at the end of the day, you're going to listen to every female artist you come along. You should. But I mean, she, she had just threw me off recently because she just was saying a lot of stuff. And it's my thing. 
if you want to be, because, you know, she recently just moved out in Atlanta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to be out there and you're going to be speaking on your city and speaking on the support and stuff like that, don't down talk your city female artists because you out there. You feel okay. what I'm saying? Because it's like at the end of the day, we all working to get somewhere. Now, we we support you. We see that you, you moved on. You did bigger things. But just because you did that, don't think that you better than the rest of us out here because... Don't forget, you're from out here. So you know exactly what the fuck is going on. You know how hard it is to be a female artist. So my thing is, like, don't down talk. So when I heard that, that just instantly threw me off because it's like she's always on social media talking about how she be at home. She don't get no support, how so much hate at home. But it's like you can't say that when you doing the same shit at home. You feel mm. what I'm saying? So that shit had threw me off. And then... She just was still running at the mouth. I don't like females that just, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you don't even know me like that to even just be so judgmental that quick. Like you said, don't read a book by its cover. Mm, like, so that threw me off. And then the shit she was doing, she just was basically faking. So I'm like, you feel what I'm saying? I'm a humble female, but at the same time, I'm not going to let nobody fake on me. So it's like, okay, you want to fake behind the scenes. I'm going to fake on the scenes, and I'm going to let everybody know what the fuck is going on and what it is because I'm not a fake person. Right. So you see, you feel like it was like just being a hypocrite. Like yeah, you, you, basically. You're talking down on people, but then talking about people talking down Right. Oh, that makes sense. So not to be uh, Mr. Kumbaya, but do mm-hmm. you think that y'all could like squash that and make a song together and like really come together on some no. This is for the City shit? I mean, I'm going to only say no because um, I'm not really a fan of Shelly. And then it's like, she already threw me off. And me, I'm going to keep it 100. I'm a stubborn-ass person. So it's not going to take for somebody else to come around and say, oh, I feel like y'all should do this and that. It's just going to have to come off me. Where I'm just going to wake up one day like, damn, should I do this or should I not? You feel what I'm saying? So that's the type of situation it is. So nobody could talk you into no. doing that. Okay, all right. That makes sense. <laughs> all right, so we got, uh, if you know, you know that dropped a week ago. Is that like a... A uh, single that you pushing, or is that just something that you just drop? Like, yeah, it's just something that I drop. I mean, it's also a single, but you know, it's just something I dropped because I just felt like it needed to be dropped mm. because you know it was just a lot of faking going on, and I'm like, okay, you want to, you know, do it like that? Oh, so wait, it's all right. So I think I might have fucked up because I listened to the song, mm-hmm. but I ain't listened to the song. So right. is that a is that a diss song? Mm-hmm. See, I really ain't did that on purpose. Right. I swear I did. So that was like uh, this to who? Shelly Joel. Oh shit! Damn. Right. What the fuck? I'm think like mm-hmm. we supposed to be pushing right. it the opposite way, and right. you just dropped the this like fuck. Yeah, cause that's just how I was feeling at the time. You know, just you know, that's just how I was feeling. You know, you just be in there smoking and writing, and you know what this remind me of? You ever seen a uh, Charlemagne and um Gucci mm-hmm. Man interview? Mm-hmm. Like, you talk so much positive shit, and then at the end, it's like, man, fuck this. Right, <laughs> like, right. Because you know, like, it's know. like, yeah, like, they know what the fuck going on. <laughs> All right, whatever. So, um, this this was just something you dropped. And how many videos you dropped this year? Because I remember um last year, you said you were trying to drop a certain amount of videos. Right. I mean, um, you see, I'm trying to get away I from I think it. I dropped probably about um seven videos this year so Damn. far. Why so many? Like, why, why do you always, like, because that's a new thing. I feel like people want to drop so many videos, like, mm-hmm. back to back. I like, mean, it's not like... Me just dropping videos, it's like, okay, so, you know, like, Janky Bam Out, we from around the same way. We both rock. And, obviously, you see me and Bam Out got a lot of songs together, so I fuck with his flow. So, it's like, Bam Out, he's still, like, around the way. I don't want to lead a hood type shit, but mm. he wants to rap. So, it's like, this nigga always want to shoot videos. That's his. Like, that's work. <laughs> yeah, like, that's his fun in the rap. So, it's like. Damn, we got a video shoot today. He's like, yeah, murder, you know you on this song. You got to come to the video. <laughs> right. So that's how most of the videos came along. And then, you know, I didn't drop probably about three videos myself with just the song myself. So, okay. yeah. So what else um, What else can we expect? Like, what other things that you got in, in the, um, working? Um, Well, like I told you, I'm working on the Chicho EP. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to drop that um, before uh, by December. Um, 
I got about two more videos dropping. I'm not gonna tell them when they is, but they dropping well, next. You can't week. Take, well, man, I, I mean, the Chicho house, video like, about to drop. So I can tell you that the Chicho's video is about to drop around Halloween time. I need the other one too. And then um, November, I'm dropping the Stepping for Not Not video. All right. So you know that's that's yeah, how we, we need coming. some type of exclusives because you right. got exclusivity in this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Like shit. I, I understand. <laughs> nah, but um, yo, I appreciate you for pulling up. Mm-hmm. Um. Did I did I did I not touch on anything that you wanted to touch? touch no, on? you touched on everything. Like okay. I felt like you didn't made me say a lot of stuff. I felt like oh. I wouldn't have even came in here and said it. That was amazing. Thank right. you. Hey, Mr. J Hill was a conversation with uh Murder, Murder Monroe. Monroe. Uh Mr. J Hill. Yeah. Again, shout out to my guy behind the camera because when this shit get popping, you need to know who made the did the magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monte Bass got shout episode out to him. ten. It's a conversation series. We out.